Welcome to the Foundational Gifts Inspirational Podcast, hosted by author, speaker, and life strategist, Nicole Kurtzie. Nicole offers her spiritual gifts to encourage us all to live boldly and to fan the flame of God's gift in us. For the next 15 minutes, enjoy this infusion of spiritual strength and practical action. Hola, 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 and welcome back to the Foundational Gift Show here on the CWA Radio Network, where we give you a 15-minute biblical infusion to help you fully step into the calling of God on your life for ministry and for service. I'm your host, Coach Nicole Kirksey. Follow me on Twitter at Coach Nicole and visit our Facebook page at Foundational Gifts. So um, this year in 2015, I participated in Thanksgiving Thursday shopping, and if you know me at all, uh, which I haven't shared this about you. I hate crowds. I hate crowds. I hate lines. I hate a bunch of chaos. I like order. <laughs> I like easy. So I usually stay away from the malls at this time. But I was away visiting relatives and they love that. They love that hustle and bustle. And I know a lot of people do. Um, you know, they love the challenge of getting a good deal, right? And beating somebody else to the deal. And so um, I went along and I didn't find anything I liked and I was mostly just cranky the whole time and I figured I was cranky because of the crowds. Um, but I ended up ordering stuff online and then I didn't, the stuff got there and it wasn't what I wanted. So now I gotta take half of that back. So now I'm even more cranky. My daughter actually asked me, I ordered some shoes and they came and she said, did you order those on purpose? That's how bad they were. So when stuff like that happens, I figure, okay, I got a right to be cranky, but there's something underlying my crankiness. And uh, I just wanted to share with you because it's taken me a few days to figure this out. So I, so I had to think back to Thanksgiving and I, I love Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is my second favorite holiday. It really is um, for a lot of different reasons, but I'm not hyper protective of it. I'm not one of these people who are like, oh my goodness, you know, how dare you shop on Thanksgiving and I refuse and it's just morally wrong. I just don't feel like that. I feel like you know, a lot of times people gather, they gather earlier in the day and once they've already eaten and seen their football game or football games aren't on yet or whatever, they want to go shop or they want to shop instead of football. They do that and there's no problem with that. And as long as employees are not forced to work uh, Thanksgiving and it's optional and it's overtime and it's a benefit to them, I'm okay with it. So, and plus there's nothing I could do about it. So that really couldn't keep me cranky. Then I, you know, did a little research on the statistics and I learned about the record setting for 2015. So Cyber Monday, um, records have been set. They're up 12% over last year. They're due to um, earn $3 billion in sales and retailers can't even keep up with the online traffic because it's no longer like Cyber Monday where you're shopping at your computer. People are using their mobile devices and their phones and so there's all these devices and all the shopping and they can hardly keep up with it. And then Thanksgiving weekend was also up like 15% and the video fights are just everywhere. You know, half of them are staged. So I can't even figure that that's even upsetting me because in my mind's eye, that's a reflection of a rebounding economy. Yes, as Americans, we need to save more and that's another lecture for another day. But to see that people are willing to spend more just again shows the economy is better or not. Again, I'm okay with that. So I'm still trying to figure out what this burr is in my saddle. So I get back um, uh, home and I'm getting back engaged in my church and I realize that this is the first year that I'm celebrating Advent, at least consciously, right? I joined a Methodist church earlier this year after worshiping at like Pentecostal and charismatic congregations for most of my saved life. And so things are different at a Methodist church. And one of the things that's different is the celebration of Advent. And uh, for those of you who don't celebrate Advent, it's considered the beginning of the public year of worship. It is a four Sunday period before Christmas where the faithful believers prepare for and anticipate the coming of Christ. That's where our mind and our attention and our spirit should be during this season. And for me already, it's an awesome reminder that yes, Christ is returning. That's the belief in that is a key part of what makes us Christians. It's not just talk. It's just not something that we just say. We really believe that he's coming back and we really should be looking uh, for that day. We should believe at it, believe on it and look at it and, and be ready. And we should also reflect the humble beginnings uh, when the word became flesh 
and came to dwell among us, from the Christ child in the manger and, and, and the humility of that. And we should reflect on our own longing of, of, of Christ and how we need a Savior every day of our lives and eternally. So Advent is a truly spiritual time, these four weeks. And frankly, it shouldn't be filled with what we fill it with traditionally. A bunch of shopping, you know, people just freak out, you know what I mean? Like try to do so much, try to just do the most during the season instead of really trying to do less, try to be less busy and more purposeful spiritually. Again, I'm not a Scrooge. I I support celebrations. I support lounging. I support cookie eating. (laughs) I support gift giving. But again, it's about the balance and what our priority is. And I found a great article about this um, on this topic by an author. Her name is Laura Hanby Hudgens, and she blogs at a place called Charming Farming, which I think is very a very cool name. And I just want to read you a passage of her her article. It is uh, listed in the show description page. She says this. There has been a lot of hubbub in recent years about the war on Christmas, but there has never been a war on Christmas. Retailers don't give two hoots about what we do on December 25th. The war is on Advent. Actually, that's not true either. To say that there's a war implies some sort of struggle. But instead, it seems like many Christians have simply been led like sheep to a doorbuster sale. We've forgotten how Christians have traditionally prepared for the birth of the Lord. We're too busy looking for the next great deal to proclaim his coming. And then we become indignant when our Walmart greeter does not proclaim his coming for us. But maybe, just maybe, the best way to prepare for our Savior's birth involves more than just wearing a Keep Christ and Christmas button to the mall. Maybe we need to prepare for Christmas by taking Advent seriously and restoring it to its rightful place in the Christian calendar. So that was a passage from her article. You know, Christians being led like sheep to a doorbuster sale. Let me tell you, I missed out on a TV price at the doorbuster sale on it, it, you know, and my husband and I were so upset because they told us it was going to happen this way and it happened a different way. And we just like, we were like losing our cool. We were going to write corporate and everything. And I just said, wait a minute. This is, we're just, <laughs> it's going to be okay. It really is. And we do it all the time. And I like the part when she talks about, you know, we become indignant when these stores don't proclaim his coming, but we don't do it either. It's just something to consider. We have to really consider this. And this really has been the burn in my saddle. Somewhere in my spirit, I knew this. Like I couldn't put my finger on it. I wasn't really conscious of it, but I knew it in my spirit. And this article is one of the things that helped me to become more aware of what irritates me about the season. And then it only gets worse, right? I was looking for an Advent calendar. And even if you don't celebrate Advent, you've seen those calendars and they have a little punch out each day. So uh, you punch out the little day and it usually has a picture and maybe a scripture and a little prayer. And it's a calendar to help you focus each and every day on anticipating the birth of Christ looking, considering the, um, anticipating his return and, you know, spiritually preparing and all the things we talk about in Advent. So I go online to see where I can get one and to see if there's an online version. And what do I see on Google? I see a ton of so-called Advent calendars. They're all put out by like businesses, businesses that in no way embrace Jesus as a son, Jesus as Lord, as savior, as Messiah. There's nothing Advent about them. It's just another way to make money. In fact, the most popular advent calendar that I saw online that day that I looked was a certain popular reality star model from a famous reality family, the most famous reality family. She's dressed up like a sexy shark on some magazine's advent calendar. And that same magazine calendar has another young model from another reality family showing some part of her anatomy. This is what they're using as an advent calendar. It's outrageous. Starbucks, that's been the center of uh, controversy this year around Christmas, they even have an advent calendar. Um, It's just chaos out there. Um, And really the enemy's goal is for us to take our eyes off of God, off of Christ, and to put them on the things of the world. And unfortunately, it seems like in too many ways that might be working. 
And I personally feel like the di a lot of the dialogue around Christmas and shopping really is just a bunch of noise. Like I said, I, I don't find anything wrong with shopping and getting a deal and um, celebrating and eating and lounging and none of that. But the real deal is that as believers, we're not preparing as we should. We're just not spiritually preparing as we should. And if we're not careful, we won't be prepared upon his return. And certainly this preparation goes beyond the season of Advent. We need to be preparing all the time, but this is there's just a principle in play that if we don't take the time and dedicate it and carve it out and separate from the world and look to him and reflect on him and anticipate his return, if we don't do that, then it won't get done and we won't be ready. You know, if we don't eat, we won't be fed. You know, if we don't sleep, we won't be rested. And if we don't take this time, we won't be ready. Um ever you know we just won't be and there's just a lot of world embracing madness going on with believers and this season it's distracting again from the coming of Christ and then if we keep this up what came to my heart or my mind is that all this world embracing madness if we keep this up and we're not focused and we don't realize that this in this season this is what we ought to be doing instead then we're going to be the wrong five virgins in the Matthew 25 parable of the virgins the virgins the lamp stands and the oil remember that you know, are we going to be the five virgins who are ready or are, is our oil going to go out and we're just going to not be ready? They were all, they were all believers. They were all in the body, but some of them were ready and some of them weren't, you know, or are we going to be the five that are distracted by other things or just assume that because we're in the body, we're all good and we don't have to think about these things we do and we should. So I personally, I want to be prepared. I love gatherings. I love a season of hanging out with friends and Dressing up in, in uh, you know, people have those Christmas sweaters, the ugly sweater contest and stuff like that. And, you know, I'm not big on decorations. That's my daughter's thing. And doing some shopping and gift exchange, that stuff is wonderful. Even the, what do they call the white elephant when you get the yucky gift or whatever. And stuff like that is fun to me. Eat, eat a ton of cookies, binge watch TV, lounge around, do all the things that come with the season. But I would just encourage us all to take these four weeks to really reflect on what it means to be in Christ, to separate from the world, to truly hope in his return, to consider ourselves. I'll consider myself and my ways and my spiritual preparation. What is it, you know, can we take the time to look around and see how we might, I might use my own gifts, my abilities, my talents, those things that God has endowed in me. How can I use my own gifts to bless someone else to help them in their preparation and to share the blessing of the season? Can I take the time to prioritize those things over all of the other stuff we do? So I found an online advent calendar <laughs> and I always have a journal ready. And so how about you? I would just ask you how you're celebrating, if you're celebrating or participating in advent, or even if you don't do advent formally, uh, at your church or in your tradition, are you choosing to separate from the world at some time during the season and to consciously think about ways that you can prepare more for the return of Christ? So tweet me at Coach Nicole and let me know. I would love to hear from you. And that is our show for today. Be sure to join us next time on Thursdays at 10 a.m. Eastern here on the CWA Radio Network. And until next time, hasta. You have been listening to Foundational Gifts, where Nicole Kirksey shares ideas to help move you upward and forward into your next level. Be sure to join us in our online community at the Foundational Gifts page on Facebook to continue in this journey of bold living.